Hello friends, Tony here, welcome. So in this video, I'm going to explain you the folder structure on Laravel. And here we have the Laravel project. We have some folders and files, and let's start with the app directory. So the app directory is where the logic of our app is. And here we have the STP models and providers subdirectory. So inside the STP folder, we defined the controllers. We using them for the logic with the STP request. And then we have uh, models. Now each database table has a corresponding model, which is used to interact with that table. And models allow you to query for data in your tables, as well as insert new records in uh, the table. Then we have providers and in Laravel 11, we have only one provider. On previous versions, we had more than that. So here we can register any application services and bootstrap any application services. Okay, let's start with the second one, which is the bootstrap directory. So the bootstrap directory in Laravel is crucial for the application startup process, also known as bootstrapping, and it contains several key elements for setting up the Laravel. Here we have the app PHP file. This file in Laravel 11 acts as the central piece for bootstrapping the Laravel, the global configuration file. It loads the framework and configures auto-loading for your project's classes. We have also the providers here we are going to register all the providers okay now let's start with the config directory and also we have some files here uh, in the previous version versions also here we had more than what we have right now with the laravel 11 we have more clean uh, project so the config directory in laravel is the central location for all your uh, applications configuration files and these files define various settings that control how your application operates. Some of the common things you can configure included the database connection, as you can see here, uh, mail, server, uh, quiz, services, session, and so on. Okay, then we have the database directory. So the database directory stores files related to managing your application's database. And also we have the database SQLite here, as you can see. We have factories, so these are classes that help you generate realistic test data for your database tables. And this is useful for seeding your database with simple data for testing. Then we have migrations. Migrations, these are the files that define the structure of your database tables. And Laravel's migration system allow you to create and modify tables over time in a controlled way. And we are going to learn them more at the course. Let's close. Then we have these seeders directory. So these are files that contain these are files that contain code to populate your database with test data using the factories mentioned earlier. Okay, then we have the public directory. So in Laravel, the public directory is a crucial folder for storing files that need to be accessible by users through the web browser. So it acts as the document root of your application. And what we can store here, uh, we can static assets like images, CSS, JavaScript, and fonts. And also, as you can see, contains the, this index.php file, the entry point for your Laravel application. So this is the entry point index inside the public directory. Okay, then we have the resources directory. And in Laravel, this directory is a location for storing various application resources that are not meant to be directly accessed on the web. So the opposite of the public directory is the resources directory. So it acts as a staging area for assets and view templates before they are published or compiled. And here, for example, we have CSS, uh, JS files and also the views and this di directory stores a blade template files that define the structure and layout of your application and Laravel's templates engine this uh, blade.blade.php compiles these files into standard HTML pages that are served to the browser okay next let's see the routes directory 
So the route directory in Laravel is where you defined all the routes for your application and this routes map URLs to specific controller actions that handle incoming requests. And Laravel automatically loads the route files you defined in here. By default, Laravel comes with these two files, the console and the web. We are going to work with the web mostly. So this file defines routes for your web interface and these routes typically benefit from features like a session state, a CSRF protection and cookie encryption which are provided by the web middleware group in Laravel. Okay, then we have this console here where we register the artisan commands, scheduler and so on. Next we have the storage directory. The storage directory in Laravel is a central location for storing various files used by the framework and your application. We have the app subdirectory. This subdirectory can store any files your application generates, uploaded user avatars and so on. Then we have the framework. This subdirectory stores files created by Laravel itself, such as uh, compiled blade templates, file-based session, etc. Then we have uh, logs. This subdirectory store log files containing information about your application's activity. Okay, then we have the test directory and the test directory in Laravel is dedicated to writing automated tests for your application and we have the feature and unit subdirectories here. So let's start with the features. This subdirectory houses feature tests and this test simulate user interactions with your application, often involving multiple components working together. Then we have the unit subdirectory. This subdirectory stores unit tests. This test focus on isolated units of your code, typically a single class or a method, and they aim to verify the correctness of individual functionalities. Okay, then we have the vendor directory, and the vendor directory in Laravel manages dependencies for your project. It houses all the third-party libraries and packages that your project relies on to function. This includes the core Laravel framework itself, along with any additional packages you've installed using Composer, a dependency management tool. And here we have uh, Laravel itself, as you can see. Okay, and then we have some uh, files here. But what I'm going to show you in this video is this .env file. Now, the .env file in Laravel is a special configuration file that stores critical information for your application. Uh, it's essentially a text file with key value pairs, as you can see, where the key acts as a name for the variable and the value is the actual data. And that's it all about this video, what I wanted to show you. I hope you enjoy, friends, and if you like such a videos, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like the video, share with your friends, and see you in the next one. All the best, thank you very much. Mm -hmm.